It's Saturday afternoon in Berlin, and from the Reichstag building to the Brandenburg Gate, from the East Side galleries to the TV Tower, the city is teeming with tourists and Berliners alike. Hundreds upon hundreds are making their way to here, to the Temperdome for semi-finals day of the German Masters 2017. And we begin with a reigning champion, Martin Gould, against a returning hero, Ali Carter. Semis today, the final tomorrow in one of our favourite snooker venues in the planet. And it has to be said, there's a bit of a hush in our studio. Jimmy White and Neil Foles have been abandoned by Germany snooker fans. And who can blame them, Neil? Because they want to get the best seat in the house for what's to come today. Yes, one table now, and it's a really different venue. We, we enjoyed last night, uh, quite chaotic at times, all the action. Now it's down to one venue, and really this, uh, the weekend, semi-finals and finals, it's, it's as good as anywhere. It's like the old conference centre plus some huge venue, very attentive audiences. I yeah. wouldn't call them crowds, audiences I think is fair over here, you know. It's a much more classy word, yeah. Neil, I'm glad you've used it. And, and Jimmy, what they've come to expect year after year after year since the German Masters return, surprises. Unbelievable this tournament, you know, um, Martin Gould's not played well all year, come back to the tournament he won last year and playing fantastic stuff. Ali Carter's um, really at home here as well, really enjoying it. And now it's gone down to a one table situation, they've took all the other tables out. They get the full attention of the whole crowd and players love it. Yeah, we've never had the same winner twice. Well, we know we're going to have a previous winner in the final. Let's officially present to you the semi-final lineup. Then Martin Gould against Ali Carter, two guys who have won the title before. The former, the reigning champion. We'll focus on that in a second. And what about tonight? The 25th team world champion who's really scrapped his way into the last four. And after an epic comeback win against Barry Hawkins last night, the fairy tale is back on for Anthony Hamilton. It's alive and well. That's coming up this evening. Even. Well, you return as a champion, that's where we're going to start. Martin Gould won last year, of course, Neil. When you won your ranking title in uh, 1986, what was it like 12 months later coming back the big dog? Oh, great for me. I mean, I, I was number one seed and I had to play the world number 51. Easy. Stephen Hendry. Oh. <laughs> Within 18 months, he was the world number four. Um, and uh, guess who won? It wasn't me, otherwise I probably wouldn't be talking about it that way. Um, obviously, Mar Marty's not had to con contend with that. I just think with Martin, you know, he, he wants to be loved, he wants to be recognised and liked, and why not, you know, and he comes over here and I think he feels quite special. He's been strutting around all week in a way that he hasn't been in venues at home. Yeah, because he'll, he'll make the same walks, those familiar walks, and it's all psychologically, positively reinforcing what happened last year. But Ali Carter, of course, very similar. He knows what it's like to come to this venue on a big weekend on the main table and deliver. Absolutely, yeah. and Ali Carter, for me, I was talking to him this morning in the hotel, you know, he's really confident in the way he's queuing and the way he's hitting the ball. His pre-shot routine is all working, everything's going well, and he doesn't fancy missing. So when some players talking to you like that, they're really confident. Absolutely. So there's the three of us here. Ronnie will join us later tonight, but more importantly, there's you. And when we say we want you to get involved, we really mean it. The hashtag is German Masters. We read them all. We will put our favourites on air as well. Send us any messages you want about the games, questions for the boys, random comments, but also send us little pictures if you're sneaking away watching your phone at work or anything, or you're, you're maybe cuddled up in your settee with your seven dogs watching. Send the pictures in to be very much part of our family. It's hashtag German Masters. And let's go through both players in our first semi-final in real detail now, starting with Martin Gold. Well, here he is. He's been cool all week, hasn't he? His road has been a Jamie Jones whitewash, Ricky Walden in eight, Ryan Day in seven, comfortable overall, playing like a champion, looking for his fourth ranking final and his second win after what happened right here a year ago. He's calm, he's focused, and he's understated as Neil Foles found out when they broke bread. Martin, warm congratulations. Something about this venue, the Temperdrome, that brings out the best in you. What is it? For me, I'm, I'm, I'm quite not sure. Um, I think it's more to do with the German fans than anything. Most of the time, whenever I've played in Germany, they've always been great. They've always given me a lot of support, always cheered for me, whether I've won or lost. Um, so whenever I've come here, it just seems like this venue's just suited for me, and I tend to bring my best game here. No one really thought of me winning it last year, so uh, I've kind of done the same again this year. Stayed under the radar, done what I need to do, and uh, performances have shown that I'm ready to 
mixed with the best. Yeah, and uh, in your, your match against Ryan Day, you started with a 137 brilliant break, so you're kicking off well. Are you in the semi finals? Things get even better, the tempo drums even more atmospheric when we get to that stage. And you're playing Ali Carter. Now, I've scanned all the records. You've played in the Championship League, but nothing else. We don't really include that. He's another guy in the same boat as you, someone that's won here yeah. at this event. Yeah, he's, well, considering what he's had to go through, um, you've got to take your hat off to him. Some people might have just, just said, you know what, I'm done, can't, can't fight it, just get on with day-to-day -day life, do what I need to do. And, but, um, yeah, you've got, you got to respect him for how he's carried on and, he, and he's proven what a great player he is. Absolutely, and we'll get to that in a couple of minutes, but Martin Gould deserves a, a lot of credit. He's worn the crown comfortably this week. Yeah, he, he, you know, as he said, he's coming under the radar, but his he's snooker this week has been the highest quality. You know, first round he won 5 0. As Neil said in that VT there, you know, the 137 kickoff at the start of a match. You don't sort of um, make breaks like that at the beginning of a game unless you're queuing really well. So he's got every chance. He didn't come in here, Neil, with that type of form, though, that suggests that no. he could repeat. There was always a chance he wouldn't qualify. Don't forget these guys had to win two matches, and that would have been a real anti climax had he not got back to the temper drone. But he's almost looked in the same form as last year. Last year, you could have said, well, even though we don't think he'll win, he was always playing the best snooker mm. 12 months ago. And this week's probably the same. Well, what of Ali Carter? There's a player who's had as much to contend with off the table as he had on it. But with a cue in his hand this week, he was brilliant against Stephen Maguire. He showed real bottle in his deciding frame against Zhao Jing Tong. And he handled an informed Tom Ford really well yesterday in the quarterfinal. So let's find out what's going on in Ali's mind ahead of today's match. Ali, into the semi-finals of a tournament you've already won. You must be delighted with the way this week has gone. Yeah, I've... Um... To get to another semis is good. I seem to enjoy it here and obviously great memories from 2013. So hopefully I can um, go, go one more. Yeah, you've won four ranking tournaments in your career. You won the World Open in, in the summer in July and, and that was a good victory for you as well. Uh, you think there were many more along the way? Yeah, um, it got me back in the top 16 and, you know, I think since 2008, 2009, apart from my, when I was ill, I've pretty much won a tournament every year and like I was saying to the boys and yourself the other day when I come off my match, it's very tough to win these events and you've got to say that, you know, there's so many good players that you have to sort of wait your turn to win an event and, uh, you know, hopefully, I, I think I've got a few more events left in me, indefinitely, to win. You mentioned your illness there, which uh, has been discussed a lot, but I'm sure it's made you a much tougher human being and, and snooker, as we all know, is, is just a game. Yeah, it is. It's my living. Um, it is just a game, but, you know, as, as you know, being a player, it's very much more than just a game. It's very important and it defines the way you feel as a person, which it shouldn't. Um, when I was ill, it put things into perspective that it is only, you know, silly balls rolling around the table, really. But when so much depends on it, it's, you know, very important. And um, that's why, you know, we all get a little bit um, high rate sometimes. <laughs> What about your opponent today, Martin Gould? He's, he, like you, has won this event, so one of you is going to have a chance to win it for the second time, which has never been done before. I've been scouring all the records. Championship League aside, which it doesn't really count for me, you've never played before, which I find amazing, considering all the snooker that there is now. Yeah, um, you know, he's, he's a great player. He seems to like playing here. He's a um, little bit of, um, you know, an orthodox sort of character. He's uh, different to quite a lot of them, and he seems like he's on his own little planet sometimes. But... Um, you know, we can all be guilty of that and uh, I'm sure he's looking forward to, to the challenge today to try and win the event just like I am. Well, Ali, Ali Carter's a, a wonderful lad, winner here in 2013, a long battle with Crohn's disease, uh, uh, missed a chunk of last season with a recurrence of testicular cancer and nearly set himself that target, get back into the top 16, he's taken a ranking title, last year he took the Paul Hunter when he came back, which at the time was a, was a minor ranking title, and you just can't have enough good things to say about this gentleman. Absolutely. Um, so much has gone on, as you rightly say, since he last won this title. Don't forget, last year was actually, he had lung cancer last year. You know, he was uh, he chemo, the full works. So he, he's, he's a wonderful fight back. They, they froze his ranking, um, which was right, the WSA. But the thing about that, it, it stood for a year, so he's able to play on his, his comeback in all of the events. But when that ranking was unlocked, if you like, mm. he had to start again. And now, look at him. You know, he's here in great health. And he's still the player that he was before. I think everyone is delighted about that.
OK, well, listen, all four semi-finalists have a real story to tell. We'll build a narrative. We'll bring you every frame live because Berlin is buzzing today. We actually kept the seat inside the Temper Drone for Angela Merkel, but she's not returning Jimmy White's emails. She doesn't know what she's missing. German Masters semi-finals live next. Well, we're almost ready, and, and it's already been mentioned, of course, but I find it absolutely remarkable. You know, I went to look at the head-to-head -head this morning, assuming that they'd have played each other 148 times. They've been in the business for so long. Never before in a, around a major table of these two sat at either side. Well, that stat, when we, we were told that stat by Folsey, I could not get my breath. They've been pros for, like, 15, 16 years and never played each other, and around about the same couple of years in their age, but uh, so they you know the, it's a new they would know each other's games so obviously watching each other on tv but uh, it's different to when you start to play someone because you try and break down their safety try and build build on your break build and see if you can get a player sort of under pressure <laughs> so it'd be interesting in the first four frames yeah i wonder does it make it a, a a better game jimmy because so often when we see two familiar names go against each other and we interview them after the game they say well i knew that's what he does i know that's what he's yeah. like they know how to slow play to fast play to frustrate where well, these two are you know familiar friends but relative strangers at the base yeah absolutely because they've not done battle with each other so like if you're playing like a a certain player who's very good at safety but if, if you don't if you're only seen that on tv and you've not watched them it's a different situation when you're up against it but uh, being a fresh match both very confident i think it will be down to just one or two shots yeah well be i find it very hard to pick any finalists from any of our two semi-finals but in particular this one no scoreline would surprise me today no, I can't. I, I couldn't have a. If I was having a bet, I couldn't pick a winner, and I think it'd be six five either way. Okay. Well, listen. Let's get the players out into this magnificent venue. Rolf is the man on the mic for you here at the German Masters on Eurosport. Der erste Spieler erlebte den größten Moment seiner Karriere genau vor einem Jahr, genau hier im Tempodrom, als er den Titel holte.